Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar about how to bring innovation to your classroom and showcase it with the STEAM Discovery campaign. It is organized as part of the STEAM Discovery campaign, which is an initiative co-organized by Scientix with the Life Torah project. My name is Guillermo Rodriguez Guerra. I am a project coordination intern from European Schoolnet and I have the pleasure to introduce today's session. So as you can see in here, we are going to have a discussion of 30 minutes long in which our speakers are going to talk about the Scientix Awards, the experience with the activities they have been involved in and so on. And after we are going to move on to a question and answer session of about 15 minutes in which they are going to answer to the different questions that may arise throughout the, the webinar. And after that, we are going to conclude with the webinar itself. Now uh, I will introduce, yes, uh, today's speakers. As you can see in here, they are all educators and they have been previous winners of the Steam Discovery Campaign Awards and competitions. And they are going to talk about the Scientist Award, the resources provided by Scientix, the campaign, the activities they have been part of, uh, their experience as experts, and so on. We have Edma Abate, Jose Maria Diaz Fuentes, Teresita Gravina, Estrabula Esquiada, and Selchuk Yusuf Aslan. And from European Schoolnet, we have also Isidora Salim, who is going to act as the moderator, and Diego Fernandez, who is going to be taking part of the technical aspects. And now, uh, very briefly, I would like to remind you about the STEM Discovery Campaign, this initiative uh, co organized by Scientix and the Lectura Project. I would like to remind you that your participation in this webinar um, can be pinned in the map of the STEM Discovery Campaign 2024. And therefore, you can be in the running for multiple Scientix awards. And without further ado, I will leave the floor to my colleague Isidora. Thank you very much, uh, Guillermo. Thank you for introducing us. Uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, uh, welcome again to our uh, STEM Discovery Campaign experts. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining uh, us tonight. We're very happy to have you here. So uh, we said this is going to be more of a, a roundtable discussion, more of a discussion how you can participate and provide some very nice uh, tips and tricks to our teachers on how to maximize the use of STEM discovery campaign. So the first question amongst you, and you can go ahead and answer as in any order as you prefer, is how has the STEM discovery campaign kind of encouraged you uh, and supported you in, in preparing your activities? How did you come up with them? Um, did you have some support with your, uh, of your colleagues? Uh, were you working alone or uh, it was a more collaborative uh, experience for you? You can choose any of your favorite activities and maybe start with that example. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, start, please. OK, thank you, Isidora. I can start. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, STEM education is very important and the number of initiatives aiming to popularize STEM education in the world is quite limited. Uh, I was involved in the STEM discovery campaign for the first time in 2017. Uh, in its first event, I enabled Turkish and South African students to come together online and do some STEM activities. In fact, uh, although this event was very ordinary after the pandemic, uh, it was an extraordinary event at that time. Uh, I received the first award and more importantly, uh, I collaborated with my colleagues across continents. After this event, I participated in all uh, STEM discovery campaigns continuously. Sometimes I receive awards, sometimes I did not, but I collaborated with many colleagues. Uh, my students gained uh, different experiences. Each event gave me different perspectives. I came together with colleagues from different countries uh, for a common goal. Uh, we inspired each other uh, for this reason. Participating in STEM discovery campaign uh, is really very useful. 
Thank you very much, uh, Selchuk. That sounds You're very welcome. amazing, actually. Uh, and so you 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 were in collaborative experience. And um, how did how did your students react to this activity and to this approach that you took? Um, my students. Uh, I'm a computer science teacher, uh, and uh, I participated in competitions of uh, technology giants such as Intel, Dell, Lenovo, IBM, etc. Uh, in these competitions, we were asked to creatively integrate the content presented to uh, into our lessons. Uh, and teaching programs are sometimes boring for students. Uh, at this point, uh, the content we applied in these competitions gave students different perspectives, uh, especially providing social uh, benefit through technology is one of my most important uh, issues. Uh, for example, in the IBM Skills Build competition, I asked my students to repair uh, broken keyboard risers. Uh, after a simple 3D design, they replaced all the broken keyboard risers uh, in the lab with new ones. Uh, the fact that their design solve a problem in real life uh, and this situation motivate uh, them a lot, I think uh, it is the most important uh, aspect of STEM discovery campaign for students. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Selchuk. Uh, uh, we already have a first question, Irene, I'm going to uh, allow your mic. You should be now able to speak. Uh, Irene, you can speak now or. OK, and uh, Blerto, sorry, wait, I'm allowing your mic as well. Uh, Okay, never mind. Uh, we we can continue. So, uh, so another teacher of our experts, uh, you can go ahead and uh, wh whoever would like to speak. Uh, Stavrula, I see you're unmuted your mic, so you can uh, tell us more. What what was your favorite activity of the STEM Discovery campaign, and how this has helped you uh, in your teaching, and how did your students react uh, to this? Um, hello from me too. Um, I'm a computer science teacher at the primary school of Athens and I have been participating in the SDC for many years now and I dare to say that it is a rewarding and enriching experience. Um, trying to design STEM projects, for, STEM projects for the campaign, I realized that I needed interdisciplinary collaboration in order to create a holistic learning experience for my students. So I was encouraged to work with teachers from different subjects, such as um, English language teachers and the art teacher within the context of the campaign. Uh, this is uh, how the campaign supported me in collaborating with my peers, as you asked before, Isidora. Also, the STC platform and the STC app supported me in sharing resources, lesson plans and ideas, because it was very easy for me to access and contribute materials. And additionally, uh, we should not forget the recognition for collaborative efforts, such as the awards and certificates of the campaign that motivated me to engage with my peers. Uh, if I have to say uh, which was the, the best uh, activity with my students, uh, I want to say that it was all the activities, the activities uh, regarding NBS. Um, I won, uh, I think the most important awards that I won was from the NBS activities. Uh, we learned a lot, uh, me and my students, um, and it was very interesting and motivated for them, uh, you know, to um, try to find solutions with had on activities regarding the planet and uh, how we can uh, tackle the climate change. Uh, so yes, I would say the environmental activities. And it was not only one. <laughs> At only one. So you would say that now, because we have NBS awards and we have, uh, aside from NBS, we have several uh, awards that are regarding um, sustainability, nature-based solution, bioeconomy. So would you uh, tell our teachers uh, currently participating in the event to go ahead and check them out? 
Yes, and I um, I would like to share an advice to tell tell them some things uh, to give an advice uh, that try to uh, your learning scenarios to have an impact. Uh, each time I decided to participate, I had the 17 global goals in my mind. Uh, so I was thinking, find a topic that will engage your students and combine technology with the well-being of your fellow humans and the planet. And there are many topics, energy consumption, quality education, reducing inequalities, climate change, all these that uh, are motivating for you and your students. And for all these topics that I mentioned, I have written scenarios and implemented most of them with my students, and I have won awards. So find appropriate resources and educational materials, materials from the Scientix repository and the STC platform and start creating educational wonders, as the IntelliSFI competition was saying. Thank you very much. Very well said, Stavrula. Uh, Thank you. Emma? Can you do you have something to add on when it comes to SDC and collaboration? Was the, was this something that you experienced as well? Did it did SDC have an impact on collaborating with your colleagues? Did it help you make new connections and uh, so on? Hello, everybody. Yes, for me it was um, a great improvement uh, for my work and job because um, I'm not a STEM teacher. I teach geography that uh, is uh, something connected with the STEM, but it's not a STEM uh, subject. And uh, I teach also literature. And in this case, the STEM discovery campaign, and this is, uh, I, I want to uh, communicate to say to the teachers that are not STEM teacher, uh, the STEM discovery campaign was for me uh, the ideal way uh, to bridge uh, humanities with uh, scientific subjects and also to have a collaboration with uh, STEM uh, colleagues. And uh, especially in the last two years, and uh, maybe they, they were the luckiest years uh, with the STEM discovery campaign, not for, not for, uh, for a, an accident, I collaborated a lot with uh, physics teacher, math teacher and science teacher for my projects. And so I think it's the ideal uh, um, occasion uh, to uh, have uh, an approach uh, that is uh, out of the box for uh, teachers that uh, teach uh, uh, human uh, humanities. A, a new way to use the, the same approach that STEM subject use uh, can be uh, also used for humanities. Uh, the methodologies, the strategies, because as Stravula said, uh, you have this uh, big uh, repository in Scientix, uh, uh, all the learning activities uh, you can use to uh, have inspiration for your entries, and most of them can be adapted, adjusted to uh, humanistic uh, lessons, uh, and especially the, uh, and the ones based on environment. Uh, I agree with Sravula. They are the, they are perfect to to bridge to uh, combine uh, these different uh, uh, fields uh, of knowledge because knowledge is uh, like uh, one thing. There are no sectors. There are no uh, fields, uh, and especially the curiosity of students uh, when they are young. They they really um, their curiosity is uh, so uh, huge that you must impact. Uh, in each part. For me, for example, I studied in a scientific high school, but after I choose humanities, this is the way that uh, young people are. They are uh, very, very, very eclectic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, very well said. And yeah, we need to find uh, truly find a way how to bridge that gap between uh, humanities and science and how to create kind of a pro project approach, integrated approach to uh, STEM to to education in general. So thank you very much for sharing your experience. And uh, I have also Jose and Teresita, what is your experience in this field of uh, integrated STEM teaching and uh, integrating new and in, uh, interesting materials in the, into your classrooms? Has the scientific materials and STEM discovery campaign and your activities uh, that you did as a part of STEM discovery campaign help you in uh, collaborating with your how did you even hear about the STEM discovery campaign, for example? Actually, the first time I participated in the STEM discovery campaign, I participated alone because during my um, 
life as a teacher, I change a lot of school. So I am always the one who is arriving, trying to involve everyone in this project. And uh, I was not lucky, so I participated a lot. But for me, it was really important because I can see the amazing work did by all the teachers all around the, youth, the Europe that was so inspirational for, for me. And then when I found someone that wanted to participate with me, I started to collaborate. And it was very nice because we decided to work on very open topic. And I collaborate with an art teacher. I am a natural science teacher so it was really interesting to talk about the same topic in two completely different ways and also the, the the material that the students create was so so nice and i love what was saying Hama, that it's we can see the same topic, the same problem in so many perspectives. And maybe if you look at this problem in different way, we will find a solution. So I think collaborate with other teacher, a teacher of other subjects will be very important to participate in the STEM discovery campaign. About my favorite uh, material created for STEM discovery campaign was one that did didn't uh, actually win, <laughs> we didn't win, <laughs> but it was a so nice project. We involved all the students talking about our city. Uh, I collect all the idea of the students and came to the mayor. So when I showed to the students my photo with the mayor talking about what they were saying in classroom, I saw their faces, it was so nice. It will be one of my wonderful experiences as a teacher. That is amazing. Thank you very much. And uh, it's very glad. I'm very glad to hear that the your favorite uh, activity wasn't the one that won. That means that it really goes beyond that. Your incentive also goes beyond that just winning of the STEM discovery campaign. So thank you very much. Uh, Jose, how about you? How is your experience with collaboration and STEM discovery campaign and preparing activities uh, for the campaign? Hi, everyone. Uh, I mean, Jose, I am a teacher uh, of, uh, of physics and technology. Um, I, I, I will define myself as a person who who learn uh, every time, every time learning. It's my 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 ability. I don't know. Um, we have a big problem. My English is very poor and it's my my challenge uh, to learn day by day uh, to express me um um build build knowledge knowledge in in my spanish in brain to english <laughs> to english project no worries <laughs> uh, we started uh, we started uh, with uh, assist in in mooc mooc's in the scientific mooc's um i i meet emma abate for example in one of these mooc and teresita and and we have worked uh, with Europeana, European Education, European Education, and uh, we have encouraged to present my works, my 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 works to the to Europe, Europe in the platform of the STEM Discovery Campaign, and uh, we we have won uh, two prizes in <laughs> the last two years with two projects, uh, beautiful projects related. Um, technology uh, with art and uh, history also um, my students are very very encouraged uh, working together in one occasion uh, last year uh, two classes to to classroom uh, 50 50 children uh, at the same time uh, we built a, a big uh, a big building um, with spaghetti and noodles, noodles and triangles. And <laughs> well, one of our, uh, one of our students eat the spaghetti, another build beautiful, beautiful buildings. And I encourage all everyone to participate in and put in the STEM discovery map uh, her little apportation, apportation uh, big or or. Or humble apportation. It's beautiful, beautiful to share with the community, the entire community, uh, what we do in, in our classes. Thank you very much. 
very well said it's from what from working for years now in the stem discovering campaign yes what teachers do in the classrooms and seeing all the efforts that teachers make uh re is really something uh, extraordinary and i really do feel very happy to see how much our teachers are are trying and how many very great interesting activities are going on in in classrooms all around the world and that this we can be a part of sharing this experience uh, thank you very much jose so i have another question now you all uh, as guillermo in the mean uh, in the beginning um, said you were winners of different uh, STEM discovery campaign opportunities. Uh, you participated in uh, different awards and you received awards for your work as a part of your different projects. So Europeana, uh, Nature Based Solution, Intel as well, uh, competitions uh, and many more different. So what do you think that actually made your activity stand out when it came to you became a winner so what do you think that made your activity stand out what uh, if you take a look at your uh, winning um, submission what was that that you think that took uh, the people who were reviewing the reviewers um, to say this is why we need this activity to win so maybe this can also help other teachers that are considering applying for the stem discovery campaign also think okay how i can make my submission better more appealing for the jury and also to really present what you actually did do in school in a best way what do you think um stavrula you can uh, go ahead and share Okay, uh, as I said before, uh, I tried all my uh, activities uh, to have an impact. Uh, this is, I think, for me, it's the key. Uh, the generally the STEM pro projects involve real world problems and challenges. Uh, so I tried to um, use innovative uh, methods. Uh, I encourage my students to approach the challenges with creativity and innovation. Uh, I try to incorporate project-based learning uh, that it's very, very motivating for my for the students. Uh, so they had uh, the opportunity to apply theoretical knowledge to hands-on situations. Uh, and Can all you this give us an example, for example, give us an example of activities that you submitted to the Stand Discovery campaign that do what you now are explaining to us. So just do a brief um, like a summary of an activity that you did that actually was a part mm -hmm. of. Uh, for example, the la the the activity of uh, last year uh, that won the NBS uh, award uh, was an activity about um, a strange one: uh, how muscles uh, can clean the oceans. Uh, so, yes, <laughs> uh, from uh, microplastics. Uh, so they had to think, uh, uh, how can, uh, I didn't say the muscles are the solution, I just gave them the problem. I told them that we have many, many microplastics in the ocean, so we have to do something to clean them, but we want the nature to do this. Uh, so they, uh, okay, I, uh, I helped them, okay, I guided them a little bit, <laughs> okay, to find some articles regarding the muscles. Uh, so they realized that, yes, the muscles uh, eat the microplastics, so they can be a solution. Uh, and then, uh, in order to understand this, uh, we did a, an activity in a, a jar. Uh, we created um, a sieve. Uh, okay, a sieve <laughs> um, environment. You know, yes. with muscles, with microplastics, uh, uh, with sponges, something like that, uh, to understand that, yes, the muscles uh, can absorb the microplastics. Oh, that sounds very, very interesting. And of mm -hmm. course, no, now we see why it won as well. Thank you very <laughs> much. And uh, Emma, how about You're you? Welcome. Isidora, yes. Uh, uh, for me, um, one of the, mm, the the tip I want to give to the other teachers uh, who are listening to this um, to this um, webinar is that um, they don't have to afford to 
to build an activity. They have, uh, because sometimes you think, okay, um, I want to shock everyone. I want to make something outstanding, something uh, marvelous and amazing that nobody has done before me. And so um, sometimes you think uh, very difficult and complex lessons, but uh, we are teacher, we are in the school. We know how difficult it is uh, uh, to teach. We uh, always uh, think about activities that are not time consuming, uh, activities that are very easy and affordable to do, that don't need uh, very expensive tools uh, uh, to the realize. And so my, um, my heartfelt advice is uh, uh, to really um, make the activities in the classroom. For me, uh, for example, last year I won with um, the Life Terra Mission uh, um, uh, Prize Award, and my activities was about uh, fires in the National Park of Vesuvio, uh, a volcano that is very close where we, we are. And we really went in the National Park at the end of the year as a sort of culminating activity uh, of my learning scenario. So my advice is uh, write a very simple learning scenario very doable learning scenarios, something you really uh, practice and uh, do in the classroom, not something you invent or you make up uh, for, the, for the competition, because uh, your, the aim is not the, uh, the prize, not the award, also because uh, uh, the challenge is uh, very, very difficult now because the, there are so many new scientific ambassadors. So if you do these activities only to win, to go to Brussels, sorry if I'm so direct, but uh, I usually are in my life, uh, your learning scenario um, is not uh, real, no? it's something not authentic. And I think that the scientific uh, people that are behind uh, this video and they check our learning scenario, our history of implementations, know exactly if you work in the classroom because the scenario are, uh, must to be very doable, very uh, concrete, very, um, very realistic and authentic. So this is my uh, heartfelt invitation to, uh, to write uh, true scenarios, genuine scenarios, nothing something collecting from internet. It, it not, not, must be something new or something amazing, no need to, to be uh, a boom scenario, but something real, something uh, practical you do with your classroom and that can be useful for other educators like we are. Thank you very much, Emma, very good advice. And I could not agree more that, uh, Practicality and doability are some the, the two things that are always standing out that you really know, you really understand your classroom and that you really know how time consuming in something and you really know your students. I think that is the best show of how quality your learning scenarios, uh, your activities. If I can say another thing, Isidora, yeah. less is more. I mean, when uh, you uh, write a learning scenario, don't uh, uh, accumulate lots of activities just to, uh, to give a good impression. Uh, just uh, put the activities that uh, are useful to uh, uh, reach the aim, the goal. So uh, le, uh, le, start from the uh, objectives of your lesson. A, uh, think about this objective of the lesson all along the learning scenario when you realize in the classroom. Uh, so don't deviate from these aims. Don't accumulate too many learning activities. Just a few, but that are very uh, centered, very student centered. Great advice. Thank you very much, Emma. Teresita, I saw that you were clapping and uh, putting a thumbs up. You agree? Uh I completely agree with Emma and I have to say I have collaborating in the teaching with Europeana for so many years and the lesson plan that have more success are the very easy one, not the longest one, but really the one that include maybe one of two activity, but if they are effectiveness, it's okay, it's, it's enough, it's, it's okay. We do not have to write an uh, uh, encyclopedia, but just to do something that uh, achieve a goal. Very well. And when it comes to stories of implementation, what are your experiences with that? Because I know 
this is also something we, we, we ask you a lot to report on your activities and STEM Discovery Campaign does focus on this activity report. So what would you say when you when teachers are writing that, what they could focus on? I really like it, the story of implementation because you can see the same activity done by another teacher, maybe on another subject and it in a completely different way. For example, I prepare one learning scenario for Europeana about one volcano we have in Italy, the Vesuvio, and another teacher from Greece used it talking about the volcano in Greece. So it was so nice to read the same activity did in a completely different way. And I like this. For example, last year I participated in the competition with an activity designed for primary school. And I use it in the last year of upper secondary school in Italy, and it was effective. So maybe it's nice to see the thing in a different way. Also in this, we do not have just to focus on what is for our topic and for the precise age of our students. We can have very nice activity from other topic and from other age of students. Very, very well. I completely agree. I have seen these kinds of uh, instances happen and it has been super interesting to see different perspectives on the same subject, same topic and the same learning scenario. Selchuk, how about you? You have a lot of experience with implementing different materials. So what is your kind of go to advice on how to do, do this correctly? Uh, uh, thank you. Ah, OK, sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Isidora. Actually, my colleagues emphasize many things. Uh, I think creativity and innovation are very important. Uh, I agree with Starola. Uh, I think it is very important to uh, motivate learners, to students. This is a process that also uh, difficult. Uh, let me give an example in the last competition organized by Lenova. Uh, students try to make recycling easier. In doing so, they use uh, artificial intelligence, one of the disruptive technologies. They show the vestas to the webcam and made it easy to open the right bin. Uh, this made recycling fun. Uh, and also, uh, Lenovo offers us some contents and they wanted to uh, us to implement uh, this content content with different way. Instead of robotic arm using using Lenovo content, uh, my student designed beans that can be opened and closed according to vest. And I think it was uh, quite creative. Uh, I must also say this. Uh, please read the terms and conditions well. Uh, the evaluation criteria here guide us. Also, as Emma said, adding too many ticks things is often useless and leads to confusion. Uh, so trying to make it short and simple is a good strategy. Thank you very much, Selch. You can uh, very well uh, put yes, every all the information you need to know, you can find in the terms and conditions and all the guidance there. And as you said, uh, Lenovo did provide some materials and examples for you. So in every case of Scientix Awards, now if you go to uh, Scientix Awards webpage, you will see descriptions of different activities and what uh, the jury will look for when giving out different awards and there you can also find different materials that you can use for uh, both your uh, inspiration uh, as an examples and to kind of guide you more on how to participate. And uh, Jose, how about you? Because you uh, participated in a lot of Europeana um, uh, awards and in uh, you, you have been winning a lot of European awards. So how is your experience with preparing materials for uh, Europeana and either the different uh, STEM discovery campaign uh, com awarding systems that we had? Uh, I agree with Edma and, and, and Teresita and all of you. Uh, with it. It's, it's not, it, it is not important to win any prizes, any prizes because the most important is, is to share to share uh, our experiences with, with the people. Uh, when I participate in one MOOC, uh, you present uh, your learning scenario and you have, uh, you receive um, um, 
¿cómo se dice? De, de, de evaluación. Um, the, the, the answer, other, other teacher uh, advise you uh, to improve. And uh, uh, always uh, it is welcome, welcome uh, because you, you learn uh, a lot um, um, about the uh, about the opinion, the opinion of the other teacher uh, who learn, who uh, read your work uh, quietly and, and, and wisely uh, also. Um, and this is, this is not important. The the, the prices that, that I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm sure. I'm sure uh, about this. Uh, in fact, uh, this year um, we we present. Uh, we have in in mind presented two projects in in the map and another more. But it is no problem though, <laughs> not to win. The important thing is to share. To share. We have. Um, it is uh, simple ideas, but beautiful ideas. It is the important uh, for me, and uh, my my student. My student is uh, engaged in uh, learning with with joy, with joy and um, um, with joy. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much, Jose. Yes, I, I completely agree. That uh, and I it's what you said. It's not about winning. And now that I see you, you. Uh, uh, you you are you say you struggle a bit with English and we ha with this in mind with a lot of teachers that are not English native speaker and a lot of us struggle with English so when we, we when we were trying to improve the STEM discovery campaign we had that in mind with the different languages in the app that you can at least see the questions and understand what we are asking you what information we are asking you to do so now you uh, it, i think maybe it could be easy also for you now to submit your activities in your own languages was that something that you tried doing uh, after the the app was launched last year did you maybe try submitting your activities in uh, spanish greek italian uh, turkish we have a, a lot of Turk. i know that we have a lot of turkish uh, teachers participating in the campaign, a lot of science ambassadors and what I've seen that this language barrier, they're really trying to break it and they have been submitting a lot of activities in their own language. So what is your experience now with the new system of uh, applying for the STEM discovery campaign? Uh, what is uh, what, what, would, what do you think? Jose, you can start now because you were the last speaking before. <laughs> You're muted, sorry. But I, 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 I didn't understand, sorry. Uh, so now, uh, since, since the, we changed, last year we launched the STEM Discord campaign app. So have you had a chance to try it? Did you try using different languages there? Was this kind of, did it help you with, understanding better also what is expected of you when it comes to submitting activities for the campaign. Yes, for me, I, I, as I said, it is a very challenge to communicate uh, with other teachers, but we have prepared um, a new project in which um, uh, people of uh, Greece, uh, Turkey, uh, Italia um, and Spain we are we are working together to uh, to create a, a museum, a virtual museum, and we have interchange interchange ideas and objects in the ancient in the ancient cultures, for example, Roman or or Ibero, or Ibero or or, or Turkish, um, and think how uh, our students uh, solve the problems in their own language, for example. Wow, amazing, amazing. That that sounds very cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, how about uh, other, uh, the rest of you guys? Have you been able to uh, try the app? Was this something easy for you to use? And uh, did it help you as well with, with understanding better what is expected from you when it comes to STEM Discovery Campaign? For, so if I can speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I think it's very easy to use the app because um, filling the form 
and answering to the to the question is very easy. I just want to um, highlight that uh, in the same discovery campaign, you can also submit events you organize for the school when, for example, you invite an expert, uh, if there is a festival, uh, a science festival, if there is a workshop you organize. Uh, so uh, it's not um, important only to uh, to write a learning scenario or implement uh, a already existing learning scenario, but also, also if you do something in your community uh, that can be uh, new and that can uh, attract uh, other people uh, to know uh, what you are doing with your students. Um, so uh, the fact that there is a map uh, in which you can pin uh, your activities uh, is very useful also to find partners, uh, to find what's going on uh, close to your home, uh, to, to start the summer um, uh, networking with other colleagues, uh, to start a project, why not? And a twinning project, an Erasmus project, why not? Because you have your map so you can geolocalize <laughs> other people they are working on that uh, specific uh, uh, activities or uh, topic or theme and so you can easily uh, find uh, partners uh, and uh, co-workers and uh, uh, other people to work on uh, to work on i think the app is very easy to use the fact that you can uh, use also from the mobile is very very good because i remember that some years ago uh, i could um, upload my learning scenario uh, only by computer uh, desktop computer not uh, by mobile. Uh, the last uh, campaign I uh, uploaded all the activities by mobile uh, because it, it was super easy for me. Uh, and we know now we have a mobile uh, every time with us. So uh, it's a something very, it, it was a good improvement, something that uh, made everything uh, go uh, very smooth. Uh, smoothly and so yes uh, don't be technophobic it's very easy to use <laughs> the app no no problem don't worry <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma, for the feedback and for really uh, pointing out that, yes, STEM discovery campaign is not just for your uh, activities with your students. It's also with uh, different events. If you take part in even as we said in the beginning, if you take part in this webinar, you can say to other colleagues that you took part in the webinar and that uh, and put it on the STEM discovery campaign map. If you're going through the MOOCs, we have a bunch of MOOCs on uh, UN Academy that can you can go check out and tell us about your participation in different MOOCs. So tell us everything that you've been doing to uh, spread the information about uh, science education, about STEM, uh, to improve yourself when it comes to STEM education. And and when I say STEM, I do really mean STEAM and integrated teaching of uh, STEM, so we really love to hear about your experiences. So uh, you, uh, I mean, listen to Emma, listen to Skiala and Resita and our SDC experts really, they know what they're talking about this here. Um, I want, I have one more question before I open the floor for questions from our um, uh, audience. And uh, sorry, uh, that question, is um has sdc helped you improve as a teacher and how what would you say it's the main goal main take for you um from your experience in the stem discovery campaign you can go in any order as you wish or i can i see yes self please go ahead oh, thank you. Uh, as a teacher, I attach great importance to both personal and professional improvement. Uh, teaching is a never ending student. I always follow and try to participate in different competitions and trainings, and I especially focus on participating in international events. Uh, such events allow you to see the uh, outstanding work done by colleagues from different countries. Uh, on the other hand, they also recognize your work and uh, this interaction feeds both you and your colleagues. Uh, this is exactly where uh, STEM Discovery campaign comes into play. Uh, thanks to STEM Discovery campaign, I got to know Europana resources. I heard about Intasikis Build platform for the first time uh, thanks to the competition and it is incredibly useful in my classes. Uh, the 
GS EMA contents are very carefully prepared and I realize this thanks to, thanks to the competition. Uh, I was invited to workshop in Brussels several times by winning prize in these competitions. Uh, different uh, contents were presented in each workshop. I had the chance to improve myself. I also uh, expanded my network. Uh, for this reason, reason, I would like to thank uh, Scientix. Thank you very much, uh, Seltruk. And well, you were uh, you you were awarded these uh, awards for a reason. So great work on your side as well. So thank you. It was uh, very it it was uh, our privilege as well to have have you there, as it was for all the SDC experts that participated in our different events and competitions. But thank you. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, Skiada, you can go ahead. Uh, we asked you before, so you can go ahead and tell us what is your main takeaway. Well, I totally agree with Sergiuk, first of all, uh, because participating in this campaign um, can offer us numerous opportunities for professional development and improvement. Uh, we have access to resources and learning scenarios and um, we can observe innovative uh, teaching methods from other participants that can inspire us and we can adopt them in our lessons. Uh, at the same time, participating in these uh, campaigns, uh, I enhanced my knowledge, of course, uh, and I improved my ability to communicate in English, both written and verbal. Uh, and as, uh, as Eljuk said, uh, the most important is the networking with other participants. We learn from them, uh, we expand our professional connections, and uh, we stay updated on the latest educational innovations. I think this is the, the, the best that you can take from this uh, campaign. Thank you so much. I would, I would completely agree on that. Uh, Teresita? Do you want to say something in addition? Yes, it seems that I am repeating, but really the most important thing is participate, being part of a community, because you will learn from everybody from Europe. And sometimes when you are not in a good school, where not a lot of people would love to participate, it's very helpful to not being alone, because you know you are part of an European community. Very well said. Um, I have one question from the chat that it was not for you, it was more for us. So I will take this opportunity to answer and to just reassure everyone submitting activities for the STEM Discovery campaign. If they don't appear on the map right away, rest assured they will appear tomorrow, one day for sure, because we are the ones approving your um, activity. So we need to um, go through to make sure that everything is all right. So rest assured your activity will appear on the map. Uh, if not, uh, you can check with us why it did not appear. We will provide you with a thorough explanation. Maybe there was a technical mistake, uh, but if not, we will inform you wh why the, the activity hasn't been uh, approved on the map and visible. So rest assured, we will go through your activities and you will be there on the map. Uh, so um, <clears throat> have no worries on, on, on that. Uh, and one more thing that I would like to give as advice as someone who is also from not the expert side, I'm not a teacher, unfortunately, but as someone who has been a part of STEM Discovery campaign, um, Clarity is key. I think maybe you can all agree on that, this all five of our uh, experts, but I think the clarity is always the key. So when you tell us about your activities, tell us what you did with how many students, what did you learn, what they learned. So those are the kind of, I would say that all the takeaways from what we've seen in your submissions, that was always the takeaway that we saw that you also learned something. So tell us what you learned, what your students learned, what you think could have went better even. So when you tell us about your activities, really tell us about your activities. It's not just it took time. It took place on Monday with five students. It just give us more information because that's, I think, the, the main um, 
outtake that we can get from STEM Discovery campaign. Uh, please, if uh, I am wrong, you can uh, correct me as someone who has been on the other side. Uh, can I add something, Isidore? Of course, please. please um, bring. I I think that uh, when somebody implementing an activity, uh, they should uh, add links and materials that can help other teachers implement their activity too. This is very helpful. Uh, you know, not just mention that, OK, I use something from that repository or the, this resource. Uh, give the, a link that can help other teachers. I think this is very, very important. And this has to do with the clarity you said. Thank you. Thank you so much for adding. And Emma, I, I see you. Say, yes, uh, ah, I, I, I can say another thing. Um, follow also the, um, the MOOCs. Uh, because uh, following the MOOCs, uh, you have all the strategies to apply in the classroom. And uh, I really like MOOCs because uh, it's the education of the future. They are all free. <laughs> they uh, are good to improve our English, our languages. Uh, and so uh, it's a way to, um, to improve the language, but also to have uh, uh, so much uh, free educational uh, repository resources. And yes, when you prepare your uh, uh, lessons, uh, uh, try to think that this, those lessons could be uh, applied also in uh, uh, realities that are very far from your uh, one. Uh, in other countries, uh, with other languages, with uh, other um, approaches to the... So try to, to make something very adaptable that can be adjusted to several countries in several languages, uh, for, uh, also for students that are different from the students you have. I know it's not very easy, but it's something that is uh, uh, so much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Um, if you have any questions, please, now is the time. Uh, and yes, uh, other teachers agree with you, Emma, that MOOCs are uh, very, very useful. And at the moment, the MOOC for of EU for Ocean is running uh, currently STEM out of the box as well. So there are many, many MOOCs of European School Minute Academy that you can take uh, even at this point uh, in the future as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I may add something. Of course, Teresita, please feel free. Something, something really, really easy. Do not forget to have fun, because if you have fun, the activity for sure will be OK, will be very nice and the students will enjoy it. We are teachers. Yes, we have to be serious, but why not to have fun? I couldn't agree more, <laughs> definitely. Um, and with this note, um, I will then if there aren't any more questions, I would really like to thank you all for being here. Thank you, Selchuk, Emma, Skiad, uh, Stavrula, and Jose and Teresita. Thank you very much for being here today with us. Uh, from uh, 5th of uh, April, we also have a science project workshop with our SDC experts, so you can uh, join these sessions and find out more how to learn more practical examples, like practical uh, tips, how to implement different uh, activities in uh, your classrooms, different resources of STEM discovery campaign. Um, so you can go ahead on uh, Scientix website and um, register for the, for the workshop. You will learn a lot of different uh, tips and tricks and all of our experts will be there. Uh, as well, so you can ask them even uh, some more questions and more practical examples and more tips how to personalize your activities, how to make them more accessible to your students and fit better your uh, classroom needs. So you can go ahead and uh, I will leave the uh, link in the chat so you can go and uh, check it out. Before we go as well, please, if you haven't, fill in the signature list so we can inform you of uh, we can give you the uh, provide you with the certificate as well as with some other opportunities that are coming up with the stand discovery campaign and um, don't forget to pin your uh, su submission your participation on tonight's webinar on the stand discovery campaign 
uh, map. Uh, I will thank again uh, Guillermo and Diego for being uh, to supporting us tonight. Thank you SDC experts and uh, I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot tonight and have a very pleasant evening and see you all uh, next time. Thank you. Have a pleasant evening.